Alexandra, did you want to say something about that? Because you're doing Circle of Hands um, right now, no, right? Oh, uh, it just started. I made uh, characters. I, I played a short campaign, like, I don't know, four or five sessions. It was like, um, I, I, I uh, play with a guy who's easily bored, let's say. Like, oh, I played like two sessions. I know what this game yeah, is I'm about. Done. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it's, it's really annoying. But uh, so, so we just started with Circle of Hands right now. Um, I, I don't know yet. I, okay. I yeah. messed the rules really badly. Right. I still have to get back to your uh, your questions. Too, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, okay. it would be nice. Yeah. Well, it was a tough day. Um, so let's see. Uh, I had a thought, but I don't want to. I, I don't. I would like other people to to chime in. And also, this um, is this was more important for raising questions than answering them. But I did have a thought. Did anyone uh, regarding, want to jump in? Yeah. Regarding this get, falling in love with your character thing, this reminds me of a conversation I actually had yesterday, uh, and of some stuff that happened in. Uh, so I I've, I don't play actively uh, Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, but when it came out, I was invited to participate in uh, a play group, and uh, what I noticed. And I, why I left that playgroup is that um, basically everybody was really, really into their own character. Right. And I, I'm sure you've seen this, right? And, and it's like that the game itself wasn't really about uh, collaboration or what. I mean, there there wasn't any uh, love for the the group or what we're doing here together. It was just people taking turns at, oh, right. let me tell you how how awesome my character is. Right. Uh, and then the GM kind of uh, making sure that everybody gets their moment. Mm -hmm. And I was just not interested in that. And I was right. talking to a acquaintance of mine yesterday about their D&D 5th edition game. And they told me this. And I asked them, I asked them, why do you play? And it was a long-term campaign. They've been doing this for a long time, right? And, and he said, well, first of all, I managed to get out of him that it was mostly because of enjoyment of the people at the table. Uh, but then he also said, I really like my character. Right. He's a bard, uh, and he likes to spend money to throw parties and stuff like that. And I'm like, right, but so what are the other characters? And he said, oh, yeah, like my other friend is like a bit annoying and whatever, and I don't like their character too much. I'm like, yeah, and then this, this, this for me is like, yeah. that's very interesting that this kind game... Maybe it went on for a year. I don't know how many sessions, but it's just extremely interesting that maybe like a game of people that meet regularly, that maybe the game itself is... I, I don't want to judge the play of others, but maybe the game the game itself is, is not as fun as it could be, but they're there because they like each other as people uh, that maybe lasts longer right. than a game that is about something and that maybe you resolve that something and then you realize, okay, the game is over. Right. Um, may I add something? So, so uh, lately, uh, a group of my uh, friends were playing a campaign, and uh, we have a Discord server where all play, all games uh, there are uh, like everyone can listen to them if if someone so so it was intended to like. Uh, learn from each other it didn't work out but people are listening to 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 sessions of of other people they they've got a campaign that ended after i think 25th session so it's insane for me they played like at least once a week sometimes twice mm -hmm. um and uh during the session, they had this uh, these encounters and like elaborate fights, like uh, going like two or even four hours. Not, like or every other session was a fight. Um, there was a drama that emerged from from uh, the player versus player conversation, or but mostly. Uh, so the funny thing was that they spent um insane amount of time between sessions talking about the characters what they are like 
oh, my character is this person who would do something, something, or I could do something, and oh, my character would respond to that in this manner. Did you um, have you heard of what's called blue booking? And it's based on I a testing it's... instrument in the United States, which is a little blue notebook that isn't used anymore because it's made of paper. But anyway, it it was it was the classic testing instrument. It was a little blue notebook, and they were incredibly cheap, so anybody could buy them. And in many groups, especially in the game Champions, people would have a blue book. And some, and they would write in it just things about their character or what the character was doing um, in between sessions of play. Many of them were writ were private; they were just written for yourself. Yeah, and they so... would be internal things. Then people started sharing them once in a while. Then people would actually have entire sessions where all they did was bring their blue books and write in them as they sat together in the same room and then maybe pass them around a little bit. And then they would play as well in other sessions. But it became a really big part of some, of, of more than one okay. group. I mean, it became a, an institution within Champions for a while to do that. Uh, okay. So, uh, that's yeah. kind of weird. Um, not, not judging. No. Uh, but, but, uh, but, so, so it, the campaign ran and ran and won, and then one character decided to, because of something that was in the campaign, to, uh, became a traitor. Like he, uh, he broke trust of the, of the group. And something weird happened. Instead of making a scene out of it and to role play it, he um, they, they didn't like whatever was in the session was like um, he, he should be killed by others. Especially the the, the characters were uh, were evil, or at least um, yeah, they they were. Um, um, the, the setting was kind of like Australia, where you send prisoners and right. like do what you want. Um, so basically, they should kill him, like uh, at at least because he uh, uh, he um, he acted against their interests, and uh, other people could like uh, be. Um, kill them as a group or something. But the group uh, talked to each other after the session. The guy pleaded that uh, he wants still to, to, to live as this character. So they, say they decided not to kill him. During the session, they made a scene when it was possible to, to, do, to, to not kill him, to, to right. uh, Where they welcome him back. Right. Yes. And the group had to uh, make a story like they uh, they worked so hard to not kill him and he didn't help them. Mm -hmm. And then on the next session, uh, he broke their trust again and they had no choice to end the campaign, but still they didn't want to make a session about it. They were like, um before the session they decided on what things should be during the uh the, the ending session the epilogue session it's interesting um, it seems like a whole lot of fiction creation out of play yes yeah. and um it it seemed to me that they um they loved the character so much or maybe they were so I don't invested in in time spent spent together, so they didn't want to break the campaign. Um, I think that was the main reason, but also they uh, they couldn't make themselves to um, actually uh, 
to see what will happen during the interaction. Like, right, will they right. eat There's, him or not? Yeah, that's a very that raises so many questions, doesn't it? I mean, I'd rather, I'd, I'd, I'd almost rather think about that for a while and see what any of us say. Okay, from that description, what on earth actually was the meaning of? Well. To use the hobby term, the campaign, but what that really means is just, you know, play as an extended device. What would the group in that circumstance be treating as the priority, especially because it's not about what would my character do? They couldn't do what my character would do, right? Um, so, what yeah. one thing extra that was in, in this, I asked them because it was super interesting to like uh, listen to them. Um, so there were things that not all players liked, but uh, because someone likes them, that we have to let them to do it because it's their fun. And now it's my fu fun in doing something That's else. That's what or Manu like, was talking about, the switching yeah, of fun back and forth, but not forever. Pushing my agenda right. forward or something. Yeah. And now it's it's their fun. So um, kind of like I tried to tell them, yeah, but if that's not interesting for you, why why bother to, to I don't know, to, to, to keep it in the game? There's, it's a, a very good question because there were, we're teasing apart certain variables. We're talking about whether something's plans to be long. We're talking about whether it's ending or its climax is preset or at least paced by things like those magic items that Manu was talking about. Um, we're talking about things like uh, what, the, you know, we have emergent endings. Um, that are very satisfying. So that's that's something else to consider is that, you know, no, we're, we shouldn't idealize just play that goes on forever as the, the top priority or the top ideal. Um, but here's here's what I was thinking earlier, because we, we're coming to the end of it all. And maybe closing statements are called for. But my closing statement goes back to an idea that I presented a long time ago which was a thought experiment, which was that many games benefited by having very colorful and individualized characters to begin with, especially if you had invented or chosen aspects of their past. If the setting was very, very easy to get, the setting was not very detailed to start. It was just maybe a, an atmosphere or a location or a very basic sorry, idea. Times, and right? so, hold on one moment. You can't interrupt. No, no, no. You, not now. Not now. You have to leave. Okay, thanks. Um, sorry. Uh, the, the, the thing with... Uh, the thing I'm saying is that if you have a setting where your characters are very... Or sorry. A game in which your characters are very rich to start. And then, if the setting is also incredibly rich, it feels like a mess. But if the setting is, is sketchy, then play can make the setting more and more and more rich to kind of match the player characters. And then the reverse is the opposite. If you want to start with a very, very deep setting with lots and lots and lots of content, Maybe it's a good idea to start with very sketchy characters and have the characters become more and more deep and more individualized as you go. Um, and we had all had a lot of experience at that time with games that were either sketchy in everything or over rich in everything. That was kind of the trend in the 90s to do one or the other. And... Um, and so the reason I bring this up is because I'm thinking that for a lot of the accounts that I've heard, it seems as though the, 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 the richness of the characters was caught up. The richness of the setting caught up with them, you know, at, at some point. 
or maybe it's the other way around, but the, the examples that we heard were more like that, where, where the, the, with the day we realized that the setting of our RuneQuest game could be filled in, and we would actually have the sensation of exploring it, even though we even knew it wasn't there to be explored first. But we still felt like it was. And so the setting, in terms of its richness, kind of caught up and started to have feedback effects on the character's own depth. The day that happened was the day when I said, we need to see where this goes. That's when I feel like, okay, I can do this. I so just to clarify, mm -hmm. I didn't understand your this this last statement of yours. Like you're saying that because I I, I don't have a lot of experience with Glorantha or RuneQuest, so maybe I'm missing like some okay. background or. Well, um, this game isn't Glorantha, which is actually pertinent to my point. So go on. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, exactly. So you were saying that in in your in your game the setting wasn't as rich as the characters and then the, the it setting allowed... was almost a complete blank it was nothing oh, but a okay. couple of aesthetics I, and a couple of gods I then had a i nice got it aesthetic feeling for it but nothing yeah. else yeah but then yeah. I, I got what you said i i, I misunderstood yeah if, you, if we were playing in glorantha that would have made no sense at all right exactly but, because when you said room quest right that's where my mind went and so 